Welcome to the Land of House channel. I'm Seth. I just started working with the Millwright Carve King 2 CNC machine. And for my first project, I want to make uh, room signs for my kids. Their birthday is coming up, and I thought that would be fun to give them. So I'm going to walk through this machine. We're going to build that project out, and uh, that will be our first official um, use of this machine here. So let me kind of give you an overview, and uh, we'll start on that project. In the future, I plan on using this for a lot more stuff, so definitely stay tuned for that. The Millwright Carve King 2 is a desktop CNC, which means it's not freestanding, but designed to be here on a uh, table or desktop. It has approximately a 20 by 20 work surface, which is good for most small projects, I feel like. It has a Makita router here, which is uh, pretty strong. So, so far I've been pleased with it, with a couple little tests that I've run. I currently have a quarter inch bit and I've got an eighth inch bit on order, but it's not here yet. So the uh, sign we're going to make will be uh, a little uh, wider letters than I was hoping for, but it'll be good. All right. So um, it's got a control box back here. It's got these uh, stepper motors for the X, Y, and Z. It also has limit switches here, here, and over here as well. Um, the cord, I'm going to make a little, uh, piece that will go up here on the wall to kind of keep that up and out of the way but for now it just kind of drapes over there all right um, I'm gonna be using easel to design my uh, sign here so before we do much more with the CNC let's go very quickly design this sign for uh, my daughter Emma's room now I don't really have a uh, good place to put the camera so you're gonna to have to see the side of my face as we uh, jump onto the computer here all right, so I'm in Easel, which is my uh, CNC program. First thing I'm going to do is go up here and adjust the size. So the uh, X here, we want uh, 7.125, I believe is what we want. And then down here, we want 11.25. There we go. And the thickness, we want to do um, 0.75. And that sets up... Um, the actual dimensions here and then the bit we're going to use is going to be a quarter inch and that's going to be that okay and now if we move over here to this side we'll be able to put our lettering in so let me go ahead and click the text all right you can move this up here and I'm going to uh, type in There we go. All right, I'm just going to click once or twice here to center that. Okay, I'm just going to shrink that down so that it fits a little better here on our work surface. Now you can look over here in the 3D view and see whether or not this is going to mill out well. I'm seeing only R over here. It's got some issues. And so if I move this a little bit bigger, hopefully we'll be able to see this uh, real smooth. So it looks like everything now, the R still got a little bit of stuff there. But I think that's going to be all right. Um, so if I had that eighth inch bit, I'd be able to do this a lot smoother, but um, that has not arrived yet. All right, I'm going to move this up just a little bit more so that I have plenty of room for my uh, other design down here that I'm going to do in a moment. Okay, so that looks pretty good. If I move over here to the cut, I only want to go down an eighth of an inch let's go ahead and do a full quarter down there all right very good and now if i press the carve button up here in the corner it's going to ask some questions so 0.75 inch yep that's correct is it locked down no not yet it's right here let's go do that real quick i'm going to turn this on over here on the wall plug there we go it is now on and now I can uh, use the computer program to get this out of the way so we can put our piece of material in there. Now that I've jogged the router out of the way, I'm gonna place this board here and I wanna make sure that it is equal away from the side here. I think right about there is going to be good. Looks nice and even. And then uh, this unit has tracks down here that I can then lock down my piece. I'm gonna do that just barely on the edge here. 
so to make sure that the router doesn't hit anything because we are going to be cutting decently close to the edge a wrench here that I'm using to uh, just tighten that down a little bit all right there we go now our piece is locked down now we can say that yes the material is secure we are using the quarter inch bit now we need to uh, move our uh, cutting piece back to the uh, uh, front left corner as seen here on the screen right here so I'm going to use this to jog back I also am going to push the down key to get this to where it needs to be almost there so the middle of the bit needs to be right here on this corner I can now say that that is the use new position I'm going to raise the bit slightly and then I can turn the spindle on which is not on yet so let's do that All right, I'm going to cut the power here, and let's see how we did. Loosen up these real quick. Yeah, pretty good. I see a couple of spots in here where uh, it has drilled a little bit too deep, but uh, not too bad. Let's give this a quick sanding real quick. Let's see how a light sanding does here. Still need to pull out some of these little burrs here, but it's looking pretty good. I just finished getting this sanded down, and as you can see, it was a nice smooth cut. Now I wanted to show you that in uh, easel, it told us that the R would have this little blip right here, and it does. So it has cut exactly what we saw on the computer here in this pine board. Um, so I have uh, something else I'm going to do to this real quick. I'm going to finish that out and show you what it looks like here when it's finished. But just wanted to talk about the Millwright real quick. So um, I reached out to them and they sent this to me. And so I have lots of projects planned with this machine. You can buy the pre-assembled version, which saves you a lot of time. Or you can get the uh, parts all in a box and put it together yourself. But um, I can just tell you right now, it's well worth getting this thing already assembled because there's a lot to this. But um, all I had to do when this came out of the box was just adjust some of the uh, threaded rods here and um, turn it on and it worked. So um, definitely really good. Um, and you're gonna see this a lot in uh, future videos, but um, check out the link in the description down below for this unit. All right, um, I'm gonna get to work here doing the other things to this little sign and then I will bring you back for the finished product. So stay around for just a moment. I just finished up the sign and made one for my son as well. Now I'm no artist, but uh, I think they turned out pretty good. Let me show you what these look like. Okay, for my daughter, Emma, I have a wolf outline. I used the uh, laser engraver. And then for my son, I used a uh, little T-Rex over here. I think he's going to enjoy that. Um, so these are uh, still drying with some polyurethane, but there we go. Arrow's room right there looks pretty good and then let me get a different angle so you can see the the wolf on this one so Emma's room with the wolf there I like it I like it a lot all right so my kids are turning four and six and I think these signs will be uh, fun for their rooms 
Uh, I'm going to uh, put little hangers on the back so we can hang them up somewhere. Um, but that's beyond the scope of this video here. Well, if you've enjoyed this uh, quick little look at the Carve King CNC, then uh, hit that thumbs up button. Be sure to check out the link to this machine down below, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.